Quentin Redding waiting back deep for the Golden Gophers. 21st in the country and looking like a team that can get to the Big Ten Championship. It's a touchback. Tanner Morgan got married in the summer just like O'Connell did. Trey Potts comes out as the running back to begin the game, not Ibrahim. And on first down, the handoff is to Potts. Looking for the edge, it's not there. Lawrence Johnson and Jack Sullivan closed up the perimeter quickly. Second down and 15 after a loss of five. Potts got some of it back. It'll set up a third down and 10. Purdue rushes four. Morgan's got time. Over the middle, it's juggled and dropped. It's incomplete. And it's fourth down. Minnesota will have to punt. Mark Crawford, the 28-year-old Australian, will come on for just the fourth time in five games. Crawford sends this one to Charlie Jones, who makes the fair catch. On first down, the give is to Dylan Downing, the walk-on transfer from UNLV, and he gets around the 40, and let's see where they mark him out, at the 43-yard line. It's a gain of 11. They'll keep it on the ground again. It's Downing. And pushing the pile into Minnesota territory, where Terrell Smith makes the stop. On the ground again, and Downing will move the chains. Another first down, a gain of three. O'Connell to the air for the first time, threw it behind T.J. Sheffield at second and ten. Empty set on second down. Three-man rush. O'Connell over the middle. It's caught by Payne Durham, the tight end. And he's out to the 42-yard line of Minnesota. It's third and five. Minnesota's only given up six third-down conversions in four games. O'Connell over the middle, and he converts. It's Paul Pifferi, his fourth catch of the season. Devin Mockaby, the true freshman walk-on in the game. He gets the call, sheds a tackle. Still churning, and he's inside the 15, and he has another first down. A very impressive opening drive by Purdue. Purdue has been hyper-efficient in the red zone this season. Maccabee spins past the defender to the 10-yard line. On second down, play fake. O'Connell checks down to Deion Burks. And he's pushed out of bounds immediately by Braylon Oliver, a fifth-year senior whose uncle, the late Alfred Hill, was an O-lineman at Purdue. Looking to Jones, into the end zone, nearly intercepted. There's a flag down. Terrell Smith was right there with Charlie Jones. Well, I sure didn't see that from up here. It was really That's an errant cool. throw. Defense. Number two. Connell, he's trying to hit the back the shoulder to his go-to target, Charlie Jones. Leaves the ball outside where you cannot put it on a back shoulder throw. Kind of gets bailed out there by the officials. And Jones leads the nation in catches and touchdown receptions. Downing. Up the middle, runs into a roadblock, gets a push into the end zone for a Purdue touchdown. He ran through the roadblock. That is the first touchdown given up by the Minnesota starters. They had not given up a touchdown in the first three quarters of a game until just now. The PAT by Mitchell Finneran is good. Van Ekren sends it away. Potts last year against Purdue suffered a season-ending injury. Had to spend time in an Indiana hospital. And here's Potts out of the backfield. He's got the 30 and is taken down by the legs. It's Kieran Douglas with the stop. Taylor? Ibrahim is on the sideline with the helmet on. I asked P.J. Fleck right before kickoff if there was any changes to the 2 deep. He said no. I also asked the school if there was any update. They say there's no update, so let's keep our eyes on it. Second and two after a gain of eight. Potts running up the middle and picks up a first down.
Still no Ibrahim. Morgan's going to take a shot deep downfield. A lot of contact. And here we go. We get the flag. Pass intended for Dalen Wright. Remember, Minnesota is without Chris Ottman Bell, one of their sixth year seniors, their top receiver. Pass interference. Defense. Potts remains in the game as the running back. Morgan over the middle, dangerous throw, incomplete. Looking for the tight end, Brevin Span Ford. Taylor? We do have some updated information on Ibrahim. Last week against Michigan State, suffered an ankle injury, was in and out of the tent. He practiced this week, was but, but was limited. Sort of a game time decision. So again, no clear sign he will not play. But as for now, it doesn't seem like he's going into the ball game. Yeah, we saw him in practice yesterday, and he looked fine. Taylor, you and I were there. Morgan fakes it to Potts. Here's the pressure from Sullivan, who gets his hand on the pass. It's tipped and it's picked off by the Boilermakers. Aiden O'Connell on first down off play action. The blitz was picked up, and the throw is incomplete for Tyrone Tracy, the Iowa transfer. On second down, play fake. O'Connell to the air and able to complete near sideline. It's T.J. Sheffield. There is a flag down. Pass interference. Offense. Little screen pass. It's Maccabee. Tries to cut it back across the 35 and gets swarmed. Look at the splits defensively. On third and 20. O'Connell underneath. He's got Burks. Breaks a tackle and gets to midfield. Still well shy of the marker. Fourth down. This one sails over the head of Redding and bounces into the end zone. Still no Mohamed Ibrahim. Bryce Williams. The running back to begin this drive, hitting the backfield and still able to get a yard. It's second down and nine. This is a Minnesota team that's anchored by what they call the Encore Four. Four sixth-year seniors who have been here for the duration of the P.J. Fleck era. It's Tanner Morgan. It's Ibrahim. It's Ottman Bell who's out for the season. And it's the center, number 60, John Michael Schmitz, the consensus top center prospect in the country. Morgan out of the backfield, Williams charges ahead close to the 30-yard line. Still no Ibrahim. Third down, Trey Potts now the running back. Potts on the cutback, he's going to be short, fourth and one. Kramer keeps it, and he is stopped. Downing. Is stood up. Mariano Sori Marin, number 55. I love the way this guy plays football. He's definitely a run stopper in the middle. O'Connell's got time. Looking for Durham. Incomplete. That was in traffic, and Durham still almost made that catch. O'Connell steps up. He'll run for it. And he's tackled shy of the marker. It'll bring up a fourth down, about five to go. And the kick is good. Yeah, you really just gifted Purdue three points. Uh, you know, Purdue moved the ball basically, you know, three, four yards that series, and they end up with points. Once again, it goes back to, I understand analytics, but why not punt the ball and make Purdue work for their points? The handoff to Potts, and he's ambushed a yard behind the line of scrimmage. And still no Ibrahim out there. He, he didn't play a whole lot in the second half last week. And I'm not sure people read enough into that, given what the score of that game was. He only had three carries in the second half a week ago. Morgan lets it fly over the middle, and that's complete. Big gainer still going. Daniel Jackson inside the 25. 
into the red zone. Potts, one cut, and then dropped at the eight yard line by Bryce Hampton. Potts sweeps right, stiff arm, and he's tripped up. That's Jacob Wahlberg, who's had his footprints and paw prints all over this first the quarter. End. He had the, the interception, now with a big TFL. Minnesota undefeated, 4-0, ranked in the top 25. It's third and goal for the Gophers, but they're down 10 nothing to Purdue to begin this second quarter. Bryce Williams in the game at running back. We still have not seen the nation's number two rusher, Mohamed Ibrahim. Watch the top of your screen, 6-7 tight end, span forward. I know if I'm Tanner Morgan, I'm looking for him down here in the red zone. Morgan floats one of the corner for Jackson, nearly picked off by Corey Trice, and it's fourth down. And Trickett's kick, no good. First carry for Kobe Lewis, transfer from Central Michigan, where he was a thousand yard rusher three years ago on a team that played for a MAC championship. Lewis again drives down to the 25 26 yard line third down O'Connell looks the other way able to complete and able to pick up a first down so they go to the Iowa transfer it's just not Jones it's Tyrone Tracy O'Connell to the air steps up into traffic it's intercepted Picked off by the safety, Jordan Howden. Sideline warning, but just that, a warning. So Minnesota takes over a yard shy of the 50. Morgan flushed and picks up a couple into Morgan Purdue Morgan. territory. On the out, that's Jackson. Broken tackle. And he's taken down inside the 30-yard line by Hampton. First and 10, Minnesota from the 28. Trey Potts is the deep back. Two tight ends for the Gophers stacked to the left. Play action. Morgan hit from behind. The ball is out. It's picked up by a Gopher. That's Potts. And he gets to the 32-yard line. Disaster averted, and somehow that actually turned into positive yardage for Minnesota. We still have not seen Muhammad Ibrahim. He's got a bit of an ankle. Did not appear to be that serious, but apparently serious enough to keep him out. Sideline throw, and there's a dart, and it's incomplete. The receiver, Jackson, was out of bounds. Downfield for Span Ford, incomplete. Trice, who almost had a pick earlier in coverage. And Minnesota, which came in at 79% on third down, now 0 for 4 on third down. It's fourth and nine. Here comes the kick team. And it just clears the crossbar. Downing got a yard for Purdue out of the eye formation play action pressure coming sideline throw and it's hauled in by Charlie Jones on the ground for a few here on first down out to the 40 yard line. O'Connell looking for Burks, who makes the catch, going across the 45 of Minnesota, a gain of 14. Play action. O'Connell trying to escape, 
And he only lost a yard. Trill Carter, cat dad to Turbo with the sack. O'Connell finds Jones inside the 40. He's going to be about a yard shy. It's third down and one. And now they're starting to go to Charlie Jones a little more. Maccabee lost the football. Minnesota says they have it. No signal yet. And it is Minnesota football. Football in 60 is presented by Rocket Mortgage. For the playbook on home loans, Rocket can. Tanner Morgan to throw. Fires one down this seam, broken up. That's Trice again. He wanted right. And that's three plays now that Corey Trice has made on the ball. Yeah, he's a he's a tremendous football player. When you talk to the coaches this week, you know, Ron English, defense coordinator, he's coached a lot of great ones in this business. And he said, listen, Trice is as talented as any player I've ever coached. You can see it there. Like I said, he's big, he's long, he's lanky, 6'3, 215 pounds. He's really got NFL written all over him. Another empty first down for Minnesota. They're averaging a yard on first downs. Williams to the outside, tripped up for a loss. The tight end, Brevin Span Ford, split wide, bottom of your screen. Morgan underneath. Jackson pinballed off the first defender, and he gets to about the 44 yard line, still three yards shy of the marker. Fourth down coming up, and here comes the punt team. Outside of the turnovers, Purdue's really played the brand of football that they were hoping to today, right? They've had success running the football. They've got some early scores. They're, they're doing a great job of stopping Minnesota's run game and forcing the ball into Tanner Morgan's hands. But they really need to clean up those airs they've had. And right now, they have a very elite punt returner back deep. Charlie Jones to return the Crawford punt. They're not even giving him a chance. This takes a Minnesota bounce. Jones do? tried to dive on it. He's able to cover it up. Big drive for Purdue. Up seven. Get the opening possession of the third quarter. Then go find some points here. Big momentum builder going into the second this half. This is Dylan Downing on the cutback and into the embrace of Sori Marin, the heartbeat of that Minnesota defense. O'Connell over the middle, it's tipped and incomplete. Here's the pressure. O'Connell flushed, running out of room. He's got Downing, who gets hammered out of bounds near the 20. It's fourth down. And when you see what Minnesota's done offensively today, the formula for the Gophers might be special teams and field position. And for Purdue, yes, you have a 10-3 lead. You felt like you left some meat on the bone in this first half. Fair catch is made by Redding at the 46, so prime field position for Minnesota. Minnesota averaging less than a yard on the ground on first down. Trey Potts is back out there again. No Mo Ibrahim in this first half. Hopefully we can find out from P.J. Fleck when the half ends. Potts scavenges for a couple. Minnesota have the 161-yard reception by Jackson. Other than that, their average play has gone for about two yards. Here's the pressure up the middle. Morgan escapes. Runs and takes a big hit shy of the 45-yard line. It sets up third down, and this is one of the rare third and manageables for Minnesota today. Four-man stunt, drag route. There's Jackson. He's got the 40, still going, and a first down for Minnesota. A career first half for Daniel Jackson. Four catches, which ties a career high, and he's got the first 100-yard game of his career.
Yeah, I really like what Daniel Jackson's doing today. He's playing confident football. He's running really smooth and sharp routes. Just a prime example of Minnesota taking what the defense gives them. Purdue played a soft cover two defense. They were drifting. They were Previous play on the field the was ruled as a reception. Tanner that Morgan just taking the drag route right in front of his face. Letting Daniel Jackson do the rest. And they're going to review this last play. There was that moment where Jackson slipped, and they're probably looking at whether his knee or elbow hit the ground. The and to further the review, area. there was a reception. The receiver was down at the 39-yard line on the right hash. First and 10 for Minnesota. Morgan throws downfield for his tight end. He's got span forward. Inside the 15-yard line, the six-foot-seven, fifth-year senior, he's been targeted more than any other Golden Gopher in the past game. Great job by Tanner Morgan manipulating the pocket. He has pressure in his face, but he does a great job using his feet, sliding away from the pressure, buying time for the throw, and making an accurate throw downfield. If Purdue's going to sell out to the run like that, continue to uh, expect to see Minnesota getting the tight ends behind those linebackers into the second level. Morgan, end zone, intercepted off the hands of Brown Stevens and into a waiting Cam Allen's hands. O'Connell hands this one off, Downing searching for the perimeter. In vain, second and ten. It's certainly changed the game plan for Minnesota. They're definitely airing it out more. They're trying to push the ball down the field. But that's okay. Tanner Morgan is a heck of a quarterback, and they're really calling the right plays for the defenses that Purdue is playing. Nice tackle by Wally in space. Not much there for Charlie Jones. It's third down and ten. They'll throw against a three-man rush. O'Connell. Completes. That's Tracy. That oh, might be late. a late hit. That's it late. is. And Purdue's going to get a first down. Braylon Oliver came in well after. And it's going to be a first down for Purdue. Ball now at the 38 of Purdue. Burks in motion. O'Connell eyes downfield. Fires. Completes. Right at midfield. TJ Sheffield. That'll move the chains. It'll momentarily stop the clock until they spot the ball. Great anticipation by O'Connell getting that ball out early and on time. O'Connell going long for Jones. Incomplete. Purdue's kicker, Finneran, has never attempted a 50-yard field goal in his career. O'Connell, this one tipped into the air. Almost intercepted by Oliver. On third down, O'Connell. This one is intercepted Tyler Newbin Morgan flushed and that one almost intercepted it's been that kind of game second and ten now high snap on the ground and Williams takes it out across the 40-yard line of the 41. You know, this is interesting to see out of Purdue. They played a lot of man coverage in two-minute situations early in the season. They are now playing zone defense, trying to protect those defensive backs. Now, this is where Purdue struggled. End of game, end of half situations. Williams has midfield. He's got a first down. That'll momentarily stop the clock. Minnesota's got a timeout. Eight seconds to go. Right from the get-go, you got the sense this was going to be different. 47 yards to the end zone. Morgan, 8 out of 17, 161 yards. 4-0 in his career against Purdue. Steps up, launches downfield well short, and it bounces shy of the 10-yard line, and that brings the first half to a close.
Ibrahim out of the game, you know, yes, that certainly throws a wrinkle into the Minnesota offense, but let's not forget, they still have very talented players on that offensive side of the ball. They have a great offensive line. They should be able to get some more, pro more production in the run game in this second half, but credit Purdue. They came out strong. They got some quick points. They've created some turnovers, and they've thrown a wrinkle into the Minnesota game plan. Yeah, Jeff Brom hasn't beaten Minnesota since 2017, his first season with the Boilermakers. Aiden O'Connell, who was a game time decision today, finds Charlie Jones, the nation's leader in receptions, out to the 28 yard line, a gain of five. And you already see the little halftime adjustments each team is going to make. Purdue was kind of a run first team on first down. There comes Minnesota. Downing, flag on the play, carrying three Gophers near the 40-yard line, but the flag is back at the 23. This could come back. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 74. 10-yard penalty. Second down. Games aren't won. They're lost. It's the team that maybe doesn't give it away in the end. O'Connell. Flair. That's Tyrone Tracy. Kobe Lewis goes wide. O'Connell in trouble and sacked from behind. Danny Strigo. Quentin Redding waits at the 36. Redding across the 40 and takes it close to midfield. Muhammad Ibrahim, the nation's number two rusher, will not play today. And I ultimately think Minnesota's offense is okay airing it out with Tanner Morgan. It's going to put more stress on the offensive line, but Tanner is a darn good quarterback. They'll set up the screen. It's the tight end span forward, and he pretzels inside the 35-yard line. A pickup of 20. Ariante Ursary, he's got the biggest upside out of all of them. Yeah, he really does. Ursary on tape is a mountain of a man. He's a lot of fun to watch, but so is this entire offensive line. You can tell their chemistry is great. They played a lot of ball together. They're confident in what they do, and they're very talented. Williams thrown down by the jersey. Reese Taylor. That's a big tackle by Taylor because if Taylor doesn't get his mitts on him, Williams had a lot of running room down that left side. A gain of nine. It's second and one. Be alert for maybe a shot to the end zone when it's second and one. You kind of, it's dealer's choice with the play call. Instead, Williams, and that'll move the chains to the 20-yard line. Span forward to the tight end, attached to the formation, top of your screen. They just look back at Morgan. Screen pass. Jackson tackled right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Three-man rush. Span forward. The tight end hangs on. He's close to the 15-yard line. It sets up a third and five. Third trip for Minnesota in the red zone. No touchdowns. Open receiver, it's caught. First and goal at the five, Michael Brown Stevens. Williams up the middle. Did he get there? No. Second and goal from inside the one. Williams again. Hammerheads into the end zone, and Minnesota a PAT from tying it up. Trickett, who missed a 28 yard field goal, on for the tie. 10 all. Football in 60 is presented by Rocket Mortgage. For the playbook on home loans, Rocket can. Here's the blitz. O'Connell finds his tight end, Payne Durham, a gain of four at second and six. Yeah. 
Durham again on the check down. Met by Oliver about a couple of yards shy of the marker. It's third down. On the slant, nearly intercepted Terrell Smith. He read it all the way, and it's fourth down. So offensively, Purdue starting to go a little stale. Six straight possessions without a point. Good punt. Chases Redding back to the 15. And he gets pinballed around before being dropped at the 18. Bryce Williams turbines across the 20 to the 21, a gain of three. The screen to Williams. And a nice pickup to set up a third and one. Purdue does not want their offense to sit on the sideline, but that's exactly what Minnesota wants. That's the brand of football they play. They want to possess it. They want to control the clock. On third and one, a first down for Williams. Minnesota started 0 for 5 on third downs. Now they've converted four straight. They came into the game converting 79% on third downs. Tops in the nation by a lot. Play clock at one. And this is Trey Potts. And you're getting the sense now, Brock. Minnesota said, okay, if we're going to be able to pick up three, four at will on the ground, yeah, Big Mo's not in there, but we'll let our offensive line do the work, and we're okay with that. And they will milk some clock as well. Again, play clock down two. Morgan will throw the slant incomplete for Brown Stevens. Cam Allen knocked it away. So third and five now from the 37. Morgan under pressure and sacked. Branson Dean and Kadron Jenkins in the backfield. Third punt for Crawford today. He had three in the first four games. This one hits somebody. It's picked up by Minnesota. The ruling on the field was that the ball was illegally touched by the kicking team at the 36-yard line, giving Purdue first and 10 from that spot. So it hits Newman's helmet, and that's where the ball dies, illegal touching. That's twice we've seen that. And, and you know, Minnesota was awfully close there to a kick-catch interference as well. You've got to give the returner a one yard right in front to make that catch. Awfully close. This feels like a very crucial possession. Correction, the ball was touched at the 34 yard line. Success as of late. They need to go to their bread and butter schemes. They need to do what they do best and have the most confidence in so they can get the ball moving down the field again. They take over at their own 34. Aiden O'Connell, the sixth-year senior, hands off Maccabi. And he is driven back after a short game by Oliver. Soda bringing pressure. And that ball is caught by Charlie Jones, his fifth reception. And it brings up a third down. Four-man twist, O'Connell steps up, he'll run for it. And O'Connell across the 45. That's a savvy veteran move by Aiden O'Connell to move the chains. Downing spins away from the defender, gets close to midfield. It sets up second down, second down and eight from the 48. Play action. O'Connell hits Durham for a first down. That's the end quarter of the third quarter. To an end.
got the ball in Minnesota territory from the 43. First down and 10. O'Connell will hand it off. Downing. Tripped up. And there is a flag back at the 46-yard line. Personal foul. foul. Face mask. Face mask. Offense. Offense. Number 63. 15-yard penalty. First down. I didn't see any face mask get pulled there. O'Connell. That one's nearly intercepted. Tyler Newbin. Second and 25. Screen to Burks. And he tunnels back close to midfield. Trill Carter made the stop. It's a third and long for Purdue. Three deep safety look for Minnesota. O'Connell over the middle. He's got Downing tripped up. He gets to the 40. Now this puts you sort of in no man's land. Fourth down, what do you do? They're going to punt it away, though, from what we see who's running out on the field. Is this a move that just reads the temperature of the game a little bit where hey if you can get field position that might be more important than a turnover on downs you're exactly right Anish and that's what Brahm's saying too he's like listen I'm not sure you can drive 90 yards down the field well now it's going to be 80 I'm not sure if you can drive 80 without having some type of turnover or an issue 1302 to go fourth quarter Minnesota and Purdue tied at 10 off play action Tanner Morgan clean pocket open receiver it's Brown Stevens and a first down and a pickup of 15 to the 35. Yeah there's a little bit of that cat and mouse game going on right now. I'd say this though you want to be careful what you ask for because Tanner Morgan can beat you with his arm. I know he has two interceptions today but those weren't really his fault. He's playing a clean game. He's very effective and efficient. Williams absorbs the initial hit and then lunges across the 40 to the 41. Third down, four to go. Heard that one up here. Yeah, I tell you what, though, Bryce Williams is running hard today, lowering his shoulder, getting yards after contact. Morgan flushed. He'll try to run for it. He's going to be short. Punts have been adventurous today. Charlie Jones waits inside his own 20. Jones from the 11. He's got the 20. And out to the 22 yard line, a 46 yard kick. Minnesota starters have only given up one touchdown all season. That was on the very first drive today to Purdue with split backs. O'Connell fires over the middle and completes. It's Tracy for a gain of four. Second down and six. Five wide. And now Tracy joins O'Connell in the backfield. Out to the sideline. Sheffield has the first down for Purdue. It's now at the 34-yard line. First down and ten. Low throw caught by Lewis, swallowed up immediately. O'Connell wants Charlie Jones. He had a step. He makes the catch. Do not blitz Aiden O'Connell. <laughs> right there, you had another six-man pressure, and I'm telling you, I would love to get a stat on what he's done against pressure today. Seems like he hasn't missed. Anytime Minnesota's brought pressure, he's found a completion right Finally found Charlie Jones in one-on-one -on -one coverage because of that pressure. Charlie does a tremendous job of tracking that football with his eyes. Makes a great catch. Big time play by the Boilermakers. Six catches, 55 yards for Jones. 28 on that play. Maccabi, big hole right side. Rumbles to the 25. And he's got another Boy, Purdue yeah, first down. O'Connell. Look into the sideline, getting set, backs into the gun. They give this to Maccabee, left side, out across the 20, into the red zone, and he's to the 18-yard line. O'Connell wants Jones. 
Incomplete Wally in coverage. Downing out of the backfield. First down. Down the sideline. Tripped up inside the 10 yard line. Keep your eyes on the tight end here. 87 Payne Durham. Big target in the red zone. Handoff. Downing. Tries to snake around the edge, gets upended by Wally. Minimal gain. And it brings up a second and goal. Payne Durham lined up at the top of the formation. Jones at the very bottom. O'Connell, eyes up, back of the end zone, incomplete. He had to throw it away, and it's third and goal. Yeah, I get why O'Connell had to move out of the pocket there, but if he could have just hung a half more second, his tight end Durham ended up getting open along the back line of the end zone, kind of came off the line of scrimmage and stumbled for a second and threw off the timing. Credit Minnesota's defense for holding them there. What do you do here? You know, me personally, I'm still looking at the tight end. I love Payton Durham. I think he's a mismatch, whether a safety's covering him or a linebacker. Jones in the slot. O'Connell looking, looking. Flips it toward the end zone. Incomplete. Wanted Maccabi the running back. And it's fourth down. For his career, perfect inside 30. And this kick from 25 is good. And Purdue takes a 13 to 10 lead. to go in regulation 13 to 10 Purdue they've been saying hey we're 64 seconds from being 4-0 they've lost twice this season in the final minute Minnesota is 4-0 because you got to remember when Minnesota went for it on fourth and didn't get it Purdue came right back kicked a field goal and got three points off that decision and Purdue did not get a first down on the turnover on downs they went three and out but we're in field goal range yeah, it just seemed like you were handing the team points when you didn't need to punt that football away, play field position. Tanner Morgan sets up the screen to Potts, shed the initial tackle, and then dropped by big number 90, Lawrence Johnson. Morgan. Fires downfield off the hands of his intended target, Dalen Wright. The Texas A&M transfer. It's third down and 11 for 12 to go in the fourth. I don't think they have the same confidence in the run game today. No, Not with Mohamed Ibrahim sidelined. There's the blitz. Morgan backpedaling. Throws off his back foot, incomplete. He wanted Span Ford, Hampton in coverage. And Minnesota has to punt it away. It's fourth down. Minnesota has all three timeouts. And Charlie Jones waits inside his own 35. Fair catch is called for. And made at the 30. Purdue ball. It's the four-minute drill for Jeff Brom's offense. Jeff Brom said he wanted his Purdue football team to get better at situational football. Well, right now, you're in four-minute offense. Can you close out the game? Maccabi cuts a jagged path across midfield. Nobody in front. Can they track him down? Devin Maccabi still going. Takes it inside the five. Justin Wally brought him down. A 67-yard gain for the true freshman walk-on. Maccabi, the walk-on. You know, I love it. His teammates, the coaches around him, they all say this guy's a gamer. Well, you know what gamers do? They make big-time plays and big-time moments, and that's what you see here. He set up his blocks. He really pressed the hole, and when the defensive line for Minnesota committed to that hole, he cut it back and gashed them for the big one. And what did we say? We said those one-yard runs that Purdue was getting in the first half, hopefully those would turn into big runs for them. Maccabi in for six! And it looked like Minnesota was almost letting them have it there. 
Listen, we were talking four-minute offense. That was 45-second offense. <laughs> but it's a two-score game. And now you've taken Minnesota out of their element. N not that the run game would still be on the table here anyway, even if you were down three. But now you're playing to Purdue's hands. They said that the recipe for Purdue today was to make Tanner Morgan and Minnesota throw. You're right. And, and to your credit, just going back to that score real quick, you know, you said it seems like Minnesota just let them score. Well, you know what? They probably did because they know they need to go get a quick score and an onside kick now with it being a two-possession game. Under Jeff Brom. Purdue has beaten five ranked teams. In 2018, they knocked off BC, number two Ohio State, and number 19 Iowa. Last year, they beat number two Iowa and number five Michigan State, and they've got a 10-point lead here in the final three minutes plus on the road against number 21 Minnesota. Redding will run this out. He's got a big opening. Flag down. Redding's got the 40. One man to beat. Tries to stay in bounds and is thrown out of bounds at the 35. But a penalty marker on the far side of the field all the way back at the 25 of Minnesota. Lengthy discussion. Jordan returns. Return. Holding. Holding. Return team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First and 10. Tanner Morgan. 4-0 in his career against Purdue. Loads up, finds a soft spot. It's Michael Brown Stevens who gets out of bounds across the 40. Back to the air. Over the middle, Jackson. And Wahlberg stops him in his tracks, shy of midfield. Six catches, 110 yards for Daniel Jackson, both career highs. This is now taking Minnesota out of its element. Pressure from Jenkins. Williams out of the backfield, and he gets out of bounds inside the 45 of Purdue. A first down, 216 to go. Give it to your ball carrier out in space, and he'll make you look good by doing the rest, making someone miss and getting some yards. Now that time, Morgan airmailed Williams. Second and 10, the clock stops, 203 to go. Both teams with their full complement of timeouts. Edge pressure, Morgan intercepted. Picked off by Cam Allen, his second of the day. He's still going and out of bounds inside the 40-yard line of Minnesota. Ball just getting away from Tanner Morgan a little bit. The give is to Maccabi. Like a battering ram to the 30-yard line, it sets up a second and two. I think you got to give a lot of credit to this Purdue coaching staff. What they did, especially in their first series of the game, right? Everyone thought Purdue was going to come out, try to air it out with these deep shots down the field to try to get an early lead. Well, you know what they did? They said, you think we're going to throw it deep? We're going to run the football on you. And that's what they did on the first drive to march it all the way down the field, get in the end zone. You saw the end of the Purdue-Syracuse game. You know, things can get weird in college football. Maccabi takes a big hit from Newbin to safety. There's someone who's not, not quitting until there's zero, zero seconds on the clock. Great play by Newbin coming up there, making the big hit. Purdue knocks off a ranked team again. That's the sixth time it's happened 
in the Jeff Brom era.